The Gospel of Gold by G.S. Lewis Claire flung down a Pokeball as Cody tossed his own. Two flashes of summoning light issued forth, fading to reveal two aquatic Pokemon resembling seahorses. Cody's was a Seedra, whose spiked fins buzzed like a hummingbird's and kept it slightly aloft. Its opponent, Claire's Kingdra, towered above, sustaining itself on a whirling pool of summoned water. Without further preamble, the two trainers issued commands, and the seahorse Pokémon blasted each other with pulses of water and draconic energy. The battle was short-lived. Cody's Seedra was a valiant creature, but only a lesser version of its fully grown foe. Kingdra felled it with three well-aimed hits, and then it did not rise again. Cody withdrew with a grim expression, and Claire began to smile. That was when Alan stepped up, loosing his own Pokeball and summoning his Fire Lizard, Charmeleon. It was a hopeless matchup, for the severe type disadvantage left Alan no chance of victory. However, Claire did not smile again, but set her jaw resolutely and ordered Kingdra to attack. A single hydro pump from the dragon's mouth sniped Charmeleon's head and dropped him. Alan said nothing, but recalled his beaten Pokémon and retreated. Instantly, the female ace trainer from before took his place and called out her own Dragonair to challenge Claire's guardian Pokémon. Where are they going with all this? whispered Marina in Gold's ear as the series of battles continue to unfold. Is it ever going to end? I honestly have no idea, Gold breathed. I don't even understand why Claire is allowing anyone to retreat unscathed. Trainer's Code of Honor, answered Alan, reappearing beside them. Claire is bound by it, if only because it's her best option. If she abandoned that pretext now, everyone would just attack her at the same time. But that's stupid, Marina protested. If we can overpower her now, why don't we? You yourself said that the League would be here in minutes. Lance and Archer are at stake. We have no time to lose. Yes, that's what I find strange, admitted Alan with a hand on his chin. I'm positive that Claire called for help, and it should have arrived by now. But nobody's come to her defense. Perhaps they realize the public upheaval that's going on right now. If all these reputable ace trainers make it into Blackthorn Gym and discover Claire's scandal, the League will need to keep up its appearances by disassociating with her as much as possible. They're probably discussing contingency plans right now. He looked Marina seriously in the eye. But this must happen as it is happening. Don't dismiss the lesson I so bitterly received. The quick and easy way is the wrong way. Unless the Ace Trainers continue to play by the rules of engagement, the League will sweep in on the pretext of quelling a riot. We must wait and see which runs out first, the remaining number of Claire's Pokémon or the number of trainers willing to defy her. The lump was back in Gold's throat as he watched Kingdra continue to dominate. Claire did not act like a queen for nothing. She really could hold her ground against every trainer that challenged her. The difference in power was simply too great. Even against League veterans, it was Violet City Gym all over again, and Azalea, and Goldenrod. He could not guess when it had started, but somewhere along the line, a decision had been made that had altered the course of nearly all Pokémon trainers. A once narrow gap between the Ace-tier trainers and the Elites just above them was now an unbridgeable divide. How had it gotten this far? And to what end was it geared towards? 
one thing now seemed certain. Claire would win at this rate. And then, there would be hell to pay for everyone involved, starting with him. Is there nothing more that I can do? He lamented, turning towards Spirit. We've shown faith and courage as well as we could, but... She was gone. Spirit? But now, a miracle becomes necessary. Finished the voice of the phoenix in his head. Then let it be so, for good must prevail at the end of all things, and on this day as well. Gold's heart fluttered at the reply, and he clung to the new hope it brought. Tell me what to do. Call one last time, she declared. Call the rightful champion by his name. Gold did not hesitate a moment to ask for clarification or the technical details. He knew better. He knew now, as he filled his lungs, that this victory had long been ordained for anyone who was willing to seize it. In a loud voice, he commanded, Lance, come forth! And, as if on cue, the inner doors of Blackthorn Gym shot open with such force that they cracked upon the walls they struck. There, in the threshold center, stood the champion himself, with his entire body swathed in white, stained bandages. His appearance was like that of a mummy wrapped fully in grave raiment, except for his head. The distinctive red hair, spiked like the crown of a warrior king, left nobody in doubt to who he was. With a shade of a limp, he strode forward, pulling something behind him, as Alan had done. There was such a silence of shock and awe thereafter, that the Pokémon ceased their combat dance. Both Kingdra and the Dratini contesting it, turned and stared at Master Lance as he made his limping way toward the open gate. Only Claire failed to see what was going on, until Lance came into sight underneath her balcony where she stood. Gold watched with profound delight as Claire's confused expression changed to raw, unfiltered shock. He imagined her expression might have been the same if he had challenged her gym as a trainer and gone on to defeat her with one Pokemon. How? She uttered with horror. How did you escape? You were unconscious! I kept three Dragonair on watch duty! So how? Her eyes widened suddenly, as if she had too late realized she'd spoken her wonder aloud. Just as quickly, they narrowed again and she gripped the railing fiercely as she screamed down, Kingdra, stop him! Use Dragon Pulse! But Lance was already speaking to Kingdra. Gold could hear his voice, but the language he used was something beyond his understanding. Not knowing who else to turn to, he looked inquisitively at Alan. I don't speak much Draconic, Alan replied with a shrug not taking his eyes off the champion. But I think Lance just made a request of some kind. His words were confirmed, as with one breath, Kingdra and Dratini shot green flames at the hinges of the Iron Gate. It fell with a resounding clang, never to be shut again. Lance proceeded forward, nodding his thanks to the Dragon Pokémon. He's the Dragon Master whispered Alan reverently, and the natives of Blackthorn obey his voice, even if they belong to Claire. That explains part of the mystery. But there's another, said Marina, pointing at the man that Lance was dragging. Who's he? That's Apollo Archer, Gold said with loathing. The last time he had seen this grim-faced man, it had been dark and Archer had been conscious. But there could be no mistake. Even out cold, the rocket commander's countenance did not soften, but remained cruel in appearance. The resemblance to his sister, Claire, was uncanny. 
Gold observed that his ruined hands were hidden in layers of the same kind of bandages that covered Lance's body, and that he wore a white uniform that was drenched red with bloodstains, particularly under the armpits. Last night had evidently been rough for him, and Karen probably hadn't wanted to risk further harm by attempting to remove his shirt. The decision would cost her the last shred of her credibility. First stamped on the uniform's left breast, over Archer's heart, was the Crimson R of Team Rocket.